Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we're going to learn about a few additional types of option pricing models. And so really what we're going to look at is there's options on a bunch of different underlyings, things like stock market indices, things like, like currencies, uh, things like futures. And so we have slightly different models for pricing them, and that's just because of some of the core differences of those products. So the first thing we're going to talk about here are stock market indices. So a stock market index is a method of measuring the valuation movements of a basket of stocks. So they're all things you've probably heard about. We've got, uh, you know, the Dow Jones Index, the S&P 500, the FTSE, the CAC, the DAX, all of these different uh, global indices. Um, that are essentially baskets of stocks. Now, some indexes are a little bit different to others. Um, some are price indexes and some are total return indexes. And so a price index is just the price performance of the underlying and a total return index uh, includes reinvested dividends. So obviously a total return index gives maybe a more accurate uh, description of the, the returns an investor would get if they bought all of the stocks in the index. Now, some indexes are more suitable than others for, uh, for derivatives, uh, for, or at least for being the underlying of a derivative. Now the reason for that is we'll say something like the Dow Jones. The Dow is very popular in uh, in the press. You know, it's uh, whenever you hear the markets up or down, they'll tell you however many hundred points the, the Dow moved that day. Now, a lot of traders pay don't pay a ton of attention to the Dow. They actually look at the S&P 500. The reason for that is because of how they're weighted. So the S&P 500 is a market cap weighted index, meaning that the biggest companies have the biggest weight in the S&P and the smallest companies are lightly weighted um, in the S&P. For the Dow, it's price weighted, which probably made sense when it uh, was formulated a, a long time ago. Uh, but essentially, how that what that means is that you just add up all of the prices. If you've got a forty dollar stock, a fifty dollar stock, so on, you just add them all up, and they are, they are weighted by the stock price. Now that doesn't make a ton of sense because, for example, a small company could be heavier weighed than another company, and not only that, every time there's a stock split of one of the stocks, all of the weightings gets readjusted. So as you can imagine, that's quite complicated if you are trying to base derivatives on, on that as an underlying. So for that reason, we traders usually look at the S&P, at least for American uh, stock performance. Other types of indices. So we've got, uh, like I said, national indices, like I, I just explained. There's things like sector indices that might look at things like the biotech sector, the telecom sector, the uh, industrial sectors, and, and so on. And the purpose of those sector indices, they're usually sub indices of a big index. And they're there just to give people an idea of how the various business components of the market are performing at a given time. And then there's all kinds of other indexes, things like green indexes or ethical indices that will uh, meet uh, certain people's ecological or social criteria. So for example, there are indices that will exclude uh, tobacco and alcohol and gun companies, things like that, that uh, you know certain investors would not want to put their money in. So options, of course, exist on these indexes. And the global market for exchange traded stock market index options is huge. It's one of the biggest markets. The Bank for International Settlements values it at 368,900 million. So it's, it's a massive market. Um, and the stock index option is the right but not the obligation to trade a given index at a given price by a given expiration date. So that's, that's all it is. But it's slightly different to, uh, to pricing an option on a non-dividend paying underlying. So we'll have to look at that. So uses of index options. Well, one use is portfolio insurance. In fact, basically the way we're going to break down the uses is the way we do with all of our derivatives, where we're going to just say that there's uh, speculators and hedgers. So speculators are people who want to profit on uh, predicting the direction of a given market or its volatility. And um, portfolio insurance then is hedgers, and that's people who are buying put options on uh, a given index in order to hedge a basket of stocks that they may own. Now, 
Uh, that leads us to the idea of beta. So in finance, the beta of an investment is a measure of the risk arising from exposure to general market movements as opposed to idiosyncratic factors, the factors that impact just that stock alone. And so the market portfolio of all investable assets has a beta of exactly one. A beta above one means that the asset is volatile and tends to move up and down with the market. And so an example might be a, a big technology company that might be very volatile, but also exposed to, uh, to general market risk factors. Negative betas are possible for investments that tend to go down when the market goes up and vice versa. So if a portfolio has a beta less than one, we have to buy fewer options to ensure it. And if a portfolio has a beta above uh, one, we're, we're gonna require more index options to hedge it. And I have a video uh, from earlier about calculating the hedge ratio for futures, and it's the exact same uh, hedge ratio will be calculated for options. So I'll put a link to that video uh, above. Okay, so then as we know from our put call parity slides, um, the payoff of an insured portfolio. So if the red line that you see on the screen right now is, uh, is the payoff of being long a stock market index or a basket of stocks, for example, the blue line there is the insured portfolio. And that's where you've bought a put on that. So you're long the underlying long a put and that gives you the payoff of being long a call option, which comes from put call parity. And if you wanna learn more about that, I have a video on that topic as well. And so for options on indexes, it's reasonable to make the simplifying assumption that dividends are paid continuously and that the dividend amount is proportional to the level of the index. So essentially, we calculate a dividend yield. So the dividend payment paid over the time uh, period is modeled uh, using the formula you see on the screen. And then for some constant Q, which is the dividend yield, uh, we're able to use the formula that you see up on the screen right now. It's just a modified Black-Scholes formula to price uh, options on, uh, on an index. So as you can see there, it's not a huge modification. It's kind of why in, in, my, uh, in my class on the Black-Scholes model, I pointed out how important the Black-Scholes model is because pretty much every model that's come after it has really just been uh, an, an improvement on a small modification, but there haven't been any massive breakthroughs uh, um, sin since the Black-Scholes model. So that's really it. We just modify the Black-Scholes model slightly in order to price uh, options on an index that has a dividend yield. Uh, so the next thing up are foreign exchange options. And a foreign exchange option is a derivative where the owner has the right but not the obligation to exchange money denominated in one currency into another currency at a pre-agreed upon exchange rate uh, by a specified date. So once again, it's, it's a standard option, but instead of, uh, in, instead of buying uh, stock, for example, we're exchanging money from one currency into another. And so the Black-Scholes model can once again be modified to price options on foreign exchange. Uh, the modified formula is called the garman Colhagen model. Um, all of these formulas, by the way, are in my uh, textbook, which is called Trading and Pricing Financial Derivatives. And there is a link to that in the description below. Um, but the garman Colhagen model was developed in 1983 and it extended the Black-Scholes model to cope with the presence of two interest rates. So it's a little bit like when we were pricing futures on foreign exchange. We just have to deal with the fact that there is more than one uh, interest rate um, there. There's the domestic and the foreign interest rate. So up on the screen right now, you'll see the formula for the garman Colhagen model. And as you can see, once again, it's a lot like the Black and Scholes model, but we've got in there RD and RF, RD being the domestic risk-free simple interest rate and RF being the foreign risk free simple interest rate. So um, if you want to pause the video, I'll put the um, put the a screenshot of the formula up so you can take a look at it and maybe compare it to the Black-Scholes model. So 
Um, so that's that's really it. That's our pricing formulas. Now, a few other things we're going to talk about, just kind of tidying up a few uh, ends that we've left um, from our prior video. So uh, one thing worth thinking about with uh, currency puts and calls is that a, a put is a call and a call is a put in the foreign exchange world. And that is because it really just depends upon which currency you're thinking in and which currency you're denominated in as to whether you view yourself as buying or selling currency, right? Because if you're dollar denominated and converting into pounds, you would view it one way, while if you're pound denominated and converting from dollars into pounds, you, you would view it another way. So a put is a call and a call is a put. And actually this, you know, with this uh, foreign exchange stuff, it actually really shows you uh, almost the nature of put call parity that that the two uh you know the two options are extremely related to each other and so obviously the prices do have to be tied to each other so that's really it on our, our sort of wrap up on options pricing um you know i'll put a little uh, write up in the description below as well if you want to look at that and that's something i do with all of my videos so if you're watching other videos and feel you need more detail uh, you know do look at the description below um, so you've you've made it over 10 minutes into the video that means you have to hit the like button and if you want to see more videos like this if you find it useful please do subscribe and you can if you love 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 the video and want to hear uh, you know every time I put a new one up you can hit the bell button now at, at the moment I'm uploading at a rate of you know a video a day so maybe you you don't necessarily want to do that um, but uh, you know uh, w once I've gotten a lot of this stuff up I'll probably move to a video a week at which point uh, you know if you're interested you might find that useful anyhow have a great day and I will see you again tomorrow with a new video bye